Hello everyone, welcome into another FIFA 23 Tactics video. As always, I'm Ash or Brahma18. Today, we are switching our focus onto Fernando Santos's Portugal Tactics. It is a guess a, a narrow diamond formation you could say call it whatever you want really a, a 4 one 2 one 2 4 4 2 with an, a diamond whatever it may be uh, this is the one we are focusing today we're going to go through the uh, positions any position change that you might need we're going to talk about the tactics and also the player instructions as well for those of you who are new to the channel welcome along make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notifications every time i upload if you want to see a further breakdown of this tactic and all the other tactics I cover, including ratings, rankings, strengths, weaknesses, suitable teams to play as with the tactic, check out my Patreon on there. You can find my FIFA 23 custom tactics package, as well as a host of other fantastic perks as well, like exclusive tactics videos only to Patreon, behind the scenes videos, early access, uh, Discord server access, and all of that good stuff. Also, check out my gaming podcast on there. We discover, discuss all things video games, including the likes of the FIFA 23 World Cup mode and with that being said let's get into the system so first things first what do you need well you can choose whichever uh, formation you want with regards to 4-1-2-1-2 narrow or if you want to do the 4-3-1-2 three, three, um, and then kind of move the centre mid that's fine as well doesn't really matter too much uh, what you want to make sure though is just in case just set these central midfielders to left central midfield uh, and right central midfield as well uh, just in case not totally sure whether the base positions when you just change the formation actually set them to that or not and the reason why i want to do this is just so we get them into those half spaces and half channels a little bit more you don't need to change the fullbacks to wingbacks something we have done in previous videos this time we just want to keep them as base fullbacks they don't advance as much and as or in as much of an attacking manner as you would expect in this system. So, other than that, no position changes. So, with that being said, let's get into the tactical instructions. Starting off with defensive style, it's pressure on heavy touch. You'll notice that they will try um, and press upfield as a unit, and it's usually instigated, despite what people will tell you, by Ronaldo. That presses. When he does start to engage, then the team will kind of push as a unit. Um, and look to press the opposition as well. They'll also instigate a counter press at times, um, and you can do that by using the teammate contain function as well as the team press function, which is down and then left on your D pad on your controller. The width is on 20, very, very compact, even with regard to that such a narrow midfield with the four in midfield, it's still very compact. They're going to force you to go out wide and try and force the opposition to cross the ball into the box with the likes of Pepe and Diaz. They feel very comfortable and confident dealing with those situations. The depth is on 50, a mid block, a flat mid block is what we have here. Very pragmatic approach. Santos has often come in for a little bit of criticism, a little bit of questioning with regards to should this team be looking to be slightly more adventurous. Um, but with regards to his system, he's remained, stayed the course basically. They're very pragmatic uh, with the mid block. They don't constantly invite pressure onto them. It gives them a little bit of balance and allows them to instigate um, those kind of sporadic presses that we've just spoken about. But it also means that you're not leaving too much space in behind uh, the defenders. So you've got that on 50. Offensively, build-up play, we've got slow build-up. Very much symptomatic of international systems, really. You're going to find that a lot of them play similar way because it's just the kind of setup of international football it's the way international football works you don't get as much time um to kind of play and uh, install these these systems though with a lot of complexity so um a lot of them very much a bit of a slower build-up so we've got slow build-up and we've also got possession as well um, and you're going to find attack to generally a little bit more stagnant they're relying um on those short intricate pieces of play uh, with regard to that narrow midfield as opposed to constantly kind of storming forward and, and hitting teams on the counter-attack. The width is on 60, stretching it out a little bit, still balanced, but stretching out a little bit more because naturally you've got that narrow forward and you don't want them to be too condensed. Um, but with regards to, you know, not having it wide on 70 plus, they don't stretch the play out too much. They, they don't want to leave too many gaps in case they lose possession and they have to then recover and get back into that narrow uh, width that we see with the 20. So we've got this on 60 and you're going to find enough space in between the players just so it's not too condensed in the central areas. Players in the boxes on 7 you giving you roughly 3-4 to four in the box. Naturally, the two strikers, Fernandez, and maybe one of the central midfielders as well, usually the right central midfielder. We'll get onto that a little bit later. 
later on. Corners and free kicks, both of these are up to four, giving you enough players in the box to make something of the set piece situations. Right then, let's move on to the player instructions. Starting off with Rui Patricio in goal. We've got him on comms for crosses, helps to relieve the pressure off you in those uh, crossing situations. But with regards to saving outside the box, only on balance, you won't find him kind of coming out of his, his area too often. And he also won't need to as much with that mid block um, and a, a kind of system that does protect him a little bit more. The two centre-backs are absolutely fine, um, so you don't need to change anything there. You could change two aggressive interceptions with Pepe, we know what he's like, um, but for that's only for kind of a personal preference and change, really. Otherwise, just keep them on the same. With the two full-backs, they're both on the same instructions. We have them on join the attack and overlap as well. They've mixed a little bit with Cancelo at left-back, Dalo, a right-back, then Guerrero, Mendes have all come in and, and played a part at left-back, but the roles do very much stay the same. These are the guys who are going to create the majority of the width, so we have to make sure that their run type is on overlap. With Ruben Neves in central defensive midfield, his defensive behaviour is cut passing lanes. Uh, and his attacking support is also stay back while attacking. He's going to protect that defence, screen the back line and not going to venture out too much. Remember, this is even more pivotal because you've only got, um, despite the narrow system, you, you haven't got wing backs and you haven't got free centre backs. So as a result, it is him in that trio with Diaz and Pepe. Um, and so his role is kind of emphasised, extra important. His defensive position is cover centre. The two ahead of him will be the ones kind of getting dragged out. He needs to stay within that trio. And his position freedom is deep line playmaker. We know what he does very well. He likes to drift around into these different pockets of space um, and pick up the ball and then progress it through him. He does a very good job of that. With the two central midfielders, now I'm going to show you how it changes a little bit depending on if they've got someone like Ate Fabio at central midfield or William Carvalho. Now they played William Carvalho against Uruguay. Obviously a little bit more fearful of that midfield and those attackers of Suarez and Cavani and Nunez etc. When they came against Ghana they switched it to Otavio. And I think it's more because in that sense they were looking to kind of take more risks. He will get forward a little bit more. So first things first with Otavio. Um, we've got him on balanced attack and support. He's not constantly running in beyond the striker, but he will provide a little bit more movement with regards to those runs. His support on crosses is getting to the box for the cross. Um, his positioning freedom is stick to position, and his defensive position is cover wing. Now, when William Carvalho did play, it was a little bit different. He was slightly less progressive, slightly less risk-taking. So as a result, his attacking support was stay out while attacking, and then his support on crosses was stay on the edge of the box of the cross. And as I say, this is something where you're using him in games where you're a little bit more fearful of the counter attack um, and of them kind of getting more um, of a foothold in mid in the midfield um, but with this case we are going with Otavio and I'll show you why we've got him at right central midfield soon as well with Bernardo Silva on the other side very very different instructions here his attack and support is stay back while attacking and that is because he is playing that role of a deeper more progressive player and what I mean by that is Fernandes is the one who will be in those advanced areas. He'll get him around the strikers as well. Otavio will often make those runs. So Silva is there as an extra kind of pivot, basically, along with Ruben Neves. His support on crosses is also staying the edge of the box of the cross. You don't want him getting involved. Positioning freedom is free roam. And this is how you're going to get the best out of him. You're going to have him dotting around all of these different spaces, sometimes drifting out wide, coming into the center, a whole range of different things and a variety to allow you to progress the ball forward. Uh, and remember, his defensive position is also cover wing. So with Bruno Fernandes at Cam, we've got him on comeback on defence to make sure that he is tracking back. And also his support on crosses are getting to the box for the cross as well. Now with his positioning freedom, he is on drift wide. This is how you're going to, or one of the reasons how you are going to get support out to these fullbacks. You're going to sometimes get players into those wider areas where there's going to be more space. Fernandes is going to come out wide either side, often likes to drift to the right more than the left. But he does do both, um, and that's the best way we can replicate that. So we have him on drift wide. So with the two forwards then, starting off with Zhao Felix. Now, it's important that you have Zhao Felix on the same side as Otavio, and I'll talk to you why very, very shortly. So first things first, support runs is drift wide. Again, he's looking to come out into the wide areas, make sure that the fullbacks aren't isolated. You have support. You can still hit them in the spaces, in the channels. 
His attacking runs is false nine. We see him often dropping into those pockets, looking to support the build up, pick up the ball, but rather than distributing it, he likes to drive forward with the ball, carry the ball forward. Now, the reason we have him on the right hand side is because. If you have him on the left, he's going to be doing a similar role with Bernardo Silva. He's going to drop off and Bernardo Silva's already going to be there and it's going to be a bit more stagnant. They don't complement each other well. If you have him on the right side, Octavio may make some more runs in and around him. So when he drops off, that's then going to complement Octavio who's going to run on. And that's why we have him and Octavio on the same side. His defensive support is also come back on defence to make sure that he is tracking back. So finally, with the big man up top, we have Ronaldo and we know how his role works regardless of club or country. His support runs, he stays central, very much that focal point, doesn't like to drift out wide too much if he can help it. Occasionally he may do, but more to do when he's carrying the ball and he's on the ball more than anything. Generally, he likes to stay as that out and out target up front. His attacking runs are getting behind, we know that very much. He likes to penetrate the back line, use his, his powerful running and his intelligent movement. And then his defensive support is stay forward we know he's not going to trap back much he's again looking to be that out ball that target if and when you need him to and these two roles between Ronaldo and Yao Felix really do complement each other well because you've got the one dropping off and then the other one running in behind and it does create that good fluidity and variation of movement that can create problems for the opposition defense Right then, with that being said, it's just about time to round it off there. If you've got any questions about the tactic, please do let me know in the comment section. If you want to see how it rates and ranks amongst all the other tactics we cover, check out my Patreon. You can get access to my custom tactics package. And you can see all the ratings and rankings and suitable teacher players on there as well. as a whole host of other perks. Don't forget to check out my gaming podcast. I really appreciate that. Links are all down below. You can find access to not only the podcast, but also various different podcasting apps. If you don't want to use the video version, you can find them on there as well. Check out my Twitter. The link is down below. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. Ring the bell to get notifications every time I upload. And drop a video if you've enjoyed it and want to see more. We're now going to go into some gameplay so you can see the tactic firsthand. And with that being said, until next time, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you soon.